Question number 12. Dr David Clark. Mr Speaker, uh, my question is to the Minister for Economic Development. What was the range of price, price escalation for the New Zealand International Convention Centre as recorded in advice to the Minister dated 26 February 2014? Honourable Stephen Jones. Uh, Mr Speaker, as is clear in the other release documents that were written around that same time, the figure was a net 30 to $40 million. It was the government's expectation at that time that any additional cost would be effectively designed out in the subsequent preliminary design stage. As we all now know, the preliminary design came back on October 15th at a much wider cost differential, and that was put into the public domain before the end of last year. Supplementary question, Dr David Clark. Has he sought and received a revaluation of the land Sky City acquired from TVNZ for the purposes of building a convention centre and upon which Sky City now intends to build a five-star, 300-bedroom hotel? If not, why not? Uh, Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, no, I haven't to this point, but I have made it clear in response to questions from uh, Green Party members that we will absolutely be taking into account any changes uh, that are to Sky City's benefit and calculating that into the overall value of the centre and, and what we will accept for the concessions that the Parliament has legislated for. Supplementary question, Dr David Clark. Can the Minister give assurance that the originally proposed column-free design for the large convention space will be retained? <laughs> um, Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, well Mr. Mr Speaker, it's, uh, it's interesting. I, I collect a lot of criticism for designing it personally, and obviously, in the interest, I might not be designing the exact placement of columns in the convention centre. But we'll assess for the member at the time uh, the, ne the next iteration of the preliminary design, and the public will get the opportunity to assess that, and we'll all be able to decide whether that constitutes the International Convention Centre that we're all seeking for Auckland. Supplementary question, Dr David Clark. Well, in light of that answer, did Sky City seek assurances he would not be involved in the Convention Centre construction process? And was it because they were concerned to avoid further gerrymandering, John mandering and Joyce mandering? <laughs> Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, I have news for them, but I have no intention to be involved in the construction of the oh, Convention oh, Centre. Oh, it is fair to say I'm not the most adept at carrying a hammer and, uh, and wielding a hammer. Uh, but I would defer, of course, to my friend Mr Brownlee, who does have some experience in that regard, but I can inform the member he doesn't intend to be spending his time constructing the Convention Centre either. Well, sure it'd end up a lot better than Order. That concludes questions for I'll answer. Would some honourable member care to move that the House takes notice of miscellaneous Mr. business? Mr Speaker. The, uh, Andrew Little. Thank you, Mr.